Hello again, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox, and welcome to another installment of my surf fishing video series. I recently decided to do some videos on some of my favorite plugs, the modifications I do to them, and some of the variations on the way that I fish them. The first video is on the Bomber Long A and the Bomber A Salt. This video is on needlefish plugs, primarily those from Super Strike. So before I go any further, let me get the disclaimer out of the way. The information provided on this video is based solely on my own experiences and should not be considered the be-all and end-all of fishing. It is intended solely to stimulate thought, provide direction, and encourage experimentation in the sincere hope that it may be of help to you on your surf fishing journey. End of disclaimer. My first experience with needlefish plugs came back sometime around 1980. These were made by Boone, and the hooks were attached to the wood plug with little screw-in hook hangers. After losing a few good fish from pulling the hook hangers out, I said screw this and threw them away. I didn't look at needlefish plugs again until the early 90s. I started using Super Strike needlefish, specifically the Super Infish models, and have never looked back. In all fairness, there are a lot of good needlefish on the market, but I think Super Strike has created a product line that is very versatile, and they work well in a wide range of conditions. So let's take a quick look at the Super Infish needlefish plugs. The Super Infish needlefish line is comprised of six models that come in a variety of colors. There are three basic lengths and each length has two weights available, the standard super infish and the heavy super infish. The five and a quarter inch model is available in either one ounce or 1.7 ounce. The six and three eighth inch model is available in either one and a half ounce or two and three eighths ounce. The seven and a quarter inch model is available in either one and three quarter ounces or three ounce. They are all made of plastic, they all sink, and they all cast like a bullet. Like all Super Strike plugs, they are made of quality components such as extra heavy S-Pro swivels for the hook hangers and VMC 4X strong hooks, so modifications are not really necessary. I do bump the hooks up to 6X strong VMCs and go up a size on some of the models, but I'm not selling anything here, it's just my thing. They're a great plug right out of the package. So what makes these plugs so unique? Well, for starters, whenever the discussion turns to needlefish plugs, there are always a few fishermen who say that they just can't get used to a plug that has no feel. And needlefish basically have no feel. They don't wobble, they don't thump, they don't rattle. There's not even much drag because they're so slim. So it's difficult for fishermen to get used to fishing a plug that doesn't feel like anything. That is, until you start catching fish on them. Then you get used to it real quick. But what really makes Super Strike needlefish unique is their versatility, and that comes from their design. They're all made of plastic, so all models fish consistently, and they all sink. This is an important point because just about every plug out there operates within four feet or less of the surface. Other than bucktails, leadheads, and swim shads, no other plug gets down to the deeper water like a Super Strike needlefish. The Super Infish doesn't sink as quickly as the Heavy Super Infish does, but it does sink at a constant rate, so you can use them as a countdown plug to reach suspended fish. They will also plane up toward the surface with a moderate retrieve. The Heavy Super Infish sink quickly and are weighted in the middle so they sink horizontally, much like real fish do when they hide on the bottom. Their heavier weight will also keep them closer to the bottom during retrieve. These characteristics give rise to a large number of ways Super Strike needlefish can be fished. As I mentioned earlier, they all cast like a bullet, so they are my go-to plug when I want to fish a teaser or two. Prior to moving to Virginia Beach, I spent more than 40 years fishing the south shore of Long Island, which consists of miles of beachfront, four major inlets, and a gigantic bay system. I use these plugs in both the ocean and quite extensively in the bay, but usually under different conditions and using different techniques. In the ocean, the heavy super infish will handle a moderate to heavy surf and give you distance on your cast. One way I fish them is to let it settle on the bottom as a wave breaks. After the wave breaks and releases my line, I lift the rod 
and reel to make the plug lift off the bottom and swim back into the back suck of the wave until the next wave overtakes it. And then I repeat the process. Not sure this makes sense to everybody, but it's the best description I can come up with. Some claim that needlefish are not very good in calm conditions, but I've had nights where I caught well in the ocean at night when it was flat calm. One notable fall night back in 2004, I drove out onto Alton Courage Beach on Long Island. No one was around. The ocean was like a lake. The moon was bright. There was no wind. Basically all the conditions that everybody hates. I tied on a yellow-white five-and-a-quarter super in and started casting as I slowly walked the beach. I immediately got slammed and continued to get hits on just about every cast for the next hour or so. It was nuts. Granted, they weren't big fish, most between 22 and 26 inches, but enough over 28 to around 31 to make it interesting. I scanned the beach several times to see if any sand deals had washed up, but found none. And because I released all of my fish, to this day I have no idea what those fish were eating or what they were even doing there. But that night, they loved the yellow-white needlefish on a moderate retrieve. In the bay, I fished them many different ways. In all the places I fish there, there is usually some level of current, anywhere from moderate to heavy, like in a channel or behind an inlet. You can fish the super ends on flats and channel edges, and you can move up to the heavy super ends when you want to drift over bottom structure in a channel. They can be fished and are effective anywhere in the water column. There's always been a lot of debate on how fast you should retrieve a needlefish. Personally, I feel there is no one correct speed, and I've always let the conditions dictate how fast or slow or what techniques I use when fishing them. Let me see if I can explain this in a way you'll understand what I mean. Let's start at the beginning with the popular notion that a needlefish is nothing more than a stick in the water. Nothing could be further from the truth. Given the presence of current, a stick will ride along with the current and offer no resistance to it. It will produce no vibration or present any sense of movement to a fish's lateral line. But when you cast a needlefish plug, from the moment it hits the water, even before you begin your retrieve, it is producing signals that a fish's lateral line can detect. The splashdown produces vibration and the sinking produces movement, both signals detectable by a fish's lateral line. And if you just let the plug swing in an arc in the current, you are again producing movement, except this time it's in opposition to the current. A fish's lateral line is very sensitive to water pressure and current, so it interprets anything that can move under its own power against current as being alive and possible prey. And you haven't even cranked the handle yet. See where this is headed? There is no one correct speed for retrieving a needlefish plug. It all comes down to conditions, water depth, and to a certain extent, the bait that is present at the time. In deep water, you might want to fish the heavy super in fish low and slow over structure along a channel bottom. In shallow water, like bay flats bordering a channel, you might want to fish a super in with a medium to fast retrieve, perhaps with a teaser in front of it. I've even seen needlefish skipped across the top of water and fish similar to a pencil popper, which seemed to trigger some really aggressive strikes. As I said, they are a very versatile plug. As for colors, I pretty much stick with yellow with white belly and blue with white belly. And I'm not sure they still make the blue with white belly anymore, but here's a picture of an early season bay bass with a blue and white stuck in his jaw. If sand eels are around, I switch to green with a white belly. Blurple for really dark nights works if you're so inclined also. I'm sure all of the Super Strike colors work under the right conditions. While the bulk of my needlefish fishing takes place with the Super Strike Super In family of plugs, there is one technique that I love that makes use of a floating needlefish plug. I picked up a couple of eight or nine inch wood floaters in black many years back from a custom maker at one of the winter shows and started experimenting with them the following season. The idea came to me from watching the way needlefish feed around bridge and dock lights at night in the bay. They don't swim around a whole lot, they just lie still on the surface until a piece of bait swims within range, and then they dart over and grab it, leaving a very visible V-wake. 
So at night, when the white bait got thick on the bay flats and fish moved in to feed on them, I started using the floating needlefish to imitate the actions of live needlefish. You cast the plug straight out from the bank and let it settle in the current with your rod tip down. Then you lift your rod tip to 12 o'clock, pulling the floating needlefish toward you, leaving a visible V-wake. Then you drop your rod tip back down and let the plug drift in the current and start its arc towards shore. Then you repeat the process, lifting your rod tip to 12 o'clock, creating the V-wake again, and then dropping the rod tip back down and letting the plug drift. Work this all the way into the bank. Hits usually come after the lift or near the bank, and like all surface hits at night, they usually make you jump. So there you have it, the skinny on one of my favorite go-to plugs. If you've never used them before, give them a shot. You may come to love them. They are versatile and they flat out catch fish. That's my view from the beach. So until next time, be well and catch him up.